And Happy New Year for those of you tuning in in early 2023. This is the Nifty Show. It's our first show of the year featuring all things Web3, digital collectibles, NFT, play and earn, gaming, metaverse, AI, who knows what's next. I'm Joel Com, and that character, the normal looking one next to me, that would be Riles. How you doing? Good, hey, sir. I'm doing great. The year has started off well. I know. And I'm excited. There's so much happening in the Web3 world. And it's really, it's our privilege today to be able to speak with somebody who has been doing this stuff for a while and has actually built a platform that has lots and lots of users. His name is Adrian Creont. He is the CEO of a company called Spielworks. They have developed a app called the Wombat app that has get this 2.6 million users since its launch. And we welcome him now to the Nifty Show. Good sir, Adrian. I will say your last name as though it is French because it is. It is Creon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks, Joel. Thanks, Riles. Great to be here. Yeah, so you're kind of a you know OG in the space, right? You've been at this for uh, for a little bit because it doesn't take very long to be considered an OG, right? It's such a short time span we're in. But when did you start Spielworks? Um, Spielworks started in 2018, early early 2018, February Fe February 2018, uh, February 2018. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that that's old school. And then uh, this is the website for anybody who wants to see the um, the corporate site is spielworks.com. And uh, the game itself is Wombat, wombat.app. And so tell us a little bit about this. So essentially, yeah, we, we do two things, right? Wombat is an app. Um, it's not a game by itself. It's about um, basically bringing gamers into Web3 and letting them play games, both traditional games and Web3 games. And we add this crypto and NFT component on top of all the games, be it Web2 or Web3. So this is how we got over, actually your number is old. It's over 3.2 million users nowadays wow. um, total that we that we basically brought into Wombat and in our, into our ecosystem. And th these are people who traditionally have been playing well, Web2 games and um, are now getting into NFTs and Web3. And we run uh, Wombat Dungeon Master, which is a top 12, top 13 game based on Depredator numbers, um, where you basically stake NFTs and you can uh, get rewards on top of these NFTs. It's, it's yeah, it's one of the most popular games. It runs on Wax and, and yes. It sounds like you're ahead of the curve because, you know, while it's been fun to create Web3 games that are really targeted towards crypto users and all about the use of crypto and NFTs in the context of the tech, you are, you are targeting the, the larger legacy gaming user base as a whole and trying to bring those people into the future. Yeah, exactly. So um, actually, it started out by a little bit of a coincidence or misplanning. Right, because we launched Wombat in 2019 in June, and we were expecting a lot of Web3 games coming up and a lot of Web3 games launching and great stuff, great content, right? But all of, all of us know that didn't happen. So um, actually, we had to reroute a bit um, in 2020 because there, there weren't that many games coming out as we, as we had hoped. Um, so instead, we actually added this component where we added this layer of NFTs and crypto on top of Web2 games. And this actually allowed us to target a ton of Web2 gamers who would basically come on the platform, play some games, get their first NFT, and actually have the first the first time NFT experience and kind of wonder, like a mid-50 guy from, I don't know, the US or, or UK or whatever, um, tweeting out, like, I just got my first NFT from Wombat. Um, I have no idea what that is or what I can do with it, but it feels great, right? So we have a lot of these people who basically have their first time experience with NFTs with us. And then we basically draw them down this rabbit hole with um, all kinds of things. We have all, all kinds of gamification on the platform where you can like run challenges on top of these NFTs. You can um, get rewards, um, like reward points if you have the whole um, collection. Um, and then you can stake them in Dungeon Master, right? So that, that, that was kind of the whole experience that we wanted to get down um, so that um, we actually educate w traditional gamers what NFTs and, and Web3 is all about without actually like showing them a video or let, letting them read an article, but actually by playing games and, and experience, experiencing firsthand. 
Well, in, in just a um, uh, short couple minutes while you were speaking there and I was listening to that, I went ahead and I downloaded from the oh, yeah. iOS app store, the Wombat app. Oh. And it's you're actually connecting to a lot of different wallets, right? So this is a comprehensive wallet to keep your tokens in and then co connect directly to these games and earn tokens in these games now did you start on no, wax um, originally we, we launched in 2019 on, on eos um because uh like the first prototype was okay. on ethereum in 2018 and then eos became a thing we were very skeptical about eos um but it looked like it could be a winner in terms of um blockchain gaming right back in 2018 it was super fast low low uh, transaction times uh, fast uh, like um uh, trip uh, like I'd say <laughs> trip times uh, like turnaround times that's that's the word uh, turnaround times um, when you have when you sign transactions right and um, so this looked like it could be with the, with its UX and its cheap transactions could be a winner for blockchain gaming then what happened to EOS happened in, in late 2019 right so with the clocked uh, uh, clocked blockchain and stuff and it essentially ever since EOS died right so we ever since actually pivoted into all kinds of blockchains. EOS is still a part of that, right? Um, but we added Wax, we added all kinds of EVM chains. So we have Ethereum, we have Polygon, we have BNB chain. So it's as you said, it's it's supposed to be a comprehensive comprehensive wallet. We don't want to um, we don't want people to have to go somewhere else in order to kind of fully use other blockchains. But we're centered and focused around gaming, right? So for us, it's really about getting the best game content on um, on the platform and enabling p uh, players to actually interact with both Web two and Web three games. Yeah, EOS turned out to be a big disappointment. But the saving grace of EOS is that Wax is an EOS fork, and Wax ended up being one of the best places for uh, for gamers. And uh, in fact, Riles here, you guys might have another discussion after the discussion here because we were just talking beforehand that a game that he's been working on is getting ready to go live on the web, and it uses NFTs on Wax. Oh, yeah. So maybe there's some synergies. Yeah, totally. We work with most of the Wax based games. In fact, it's it's been hard to exist in the wax space for for a prolonged period of time without Wombat coming up here and there, just because of how much you've grown and, and how many things into which you've integrated. But I'm I'm really curious about the angle on which you, you feel that you succeeded with gamers that were in Web two pretty much exclusively because you were just talking about this this account of somebody who retweeted i just got my first nft and i have no idea what it does through wombat how did you pull people like that in if they weren't drawn by the nfts um well a large part is nfts right and, and it has always been nfts because they basically read about it they they've heard about nfts and they came on on our platform through i don't know ads or a video or um, referrals or whatever and um, they basically just the, the, the cool thing about our platform is that as a web 2 gamer you can basically keep doing what you've done right and we have it's not like we built all the games ourselves it's um, that uh, we are working with some of the largest mobile publishers and basically have um, double a triple a mobile titles um, on the platform with like 50 100, 200, 300 million downloads. So these are proven winners. So basically, Web2 gamers can just come on, do whatever they want to do, play games that are fun, right? And on the side, on top of that, get some NFTs that is totally risk-free, essentially, right? You're basically just investing your time in a game that others play just for fun, right? And you play it for fun and for NFTs, for instance. And then once you have these NFTs, this is where, where it starts clicking, right? Um, and then we basically show you challenges or, or what we call missions, or um, we, we tell you, okay, now you can actually go to Dun Dungeon Master and stake them and get some rewards and get some extra fun, right? So it's really this kind of step-by-step -step, um, funnel, the step-by-step -step approach um, where you don't even notice that you're doing something new. Because um, it's it's basically always this kind of on top thing, right? You don't have to. You you can just keep on playing the game without us. Um, you don't have to go back to the Wombat app. If you uninstall, you can still keep playing the game, right? And we will still keep counting your points, essentially. And after a year, if you come back and, and reinstall Wombat, you'll see, oh, look, I've got 200,000 Wombax. And now you, I can redeem them for whatever, loot box with NFTs or, or some crypto or whatever.
So once you've connected your wallets, then you're earning Wombat in those games that you've you've connected with, whether you're in the Wombat app. And I, I noticed when I launched the app, I ha- I was able to, let's see, it gave me uh, 500 or so tokens to begin with. And it was like, you can buy, you can claim a loot box for 100 tokens. And that's exactly what I did here. And then I continue and uh, it's going to give me some goodies. I don't know what I'm going to get in my loot box, but um, so really your platform, you're kind of like um, a Steam or an Epic for gaming, but you've introduced this token that allows people to earn as they play the games they love. Yeah, we, we have a little bit of an indirection. So what you've been getting is not Wombat tokens, but what we call Wombax, and that's a soft currency. Right? Okay. Um, so obviously, if you, if you hand out tokens like that, and we're like the, as a wallet, we're non-custodial, and we want to keep it like that, right? We want that if people hold tokens in Wombat, it's theirs. So as soon as they see a balance of Wombat tokens, it's their tokens, and we can't, uh, we can't take them back, right? So based on that philosophy, we wanted to have an indirection so that we, well, we don't get exploited too much. We don't, we don't see too much fraud of people downloading the app 100 mm-hmm. times. Obviously, that's, that's the stuff that happens all the time and civil attacks and stuff in, in the crypto space. Everyone knows about that, and everyone tries to, to kind of um, to, to fight it, right? So that's our way of fighting this. We have this indirection. So once a week, you can basically um, cash in your Wombox for actual crypto, and you can choose what kind of crypto you want. We'll soon have the Wombat token there as well. Right now, it's, uh, it's EOS, it's um, Bitcoin, it's Matic, right, um, that you can get. We'll, we'll be adding more currencies there. Um, okay, so you're, you're telling me, Adrian, that in – so the, the token itself, is, you can use it to buy things – nfts or upgrades or or you can you can explain what things but um that is the utility you earn these wombat coins but that's not the same as the erc20 token so wombox is the soft currency that you earn by playing games and that you can later redeem for crypto and that will also soon be the wombat token there's the token the erc20 wombat token is something that you can get by um by by yeah being on the platform and that's that's this game. one here that we're looking at in coin exactly. coin gecko this is the actual wombat token and this you'll be able to buy what with so you can stake the token um there's seven different vip levels the more you stake the more benefits you get you get you, um, one thing is that you can earn more one box uh, if you vip um but um you can also get benefits in the in the wombat dungeon master game right you can get free nft packs every season you can get a free season pass nft every season um, and a lot of other things, more materials and stuff. So it's kind of this cross product um, platform token that we have. So obviously with any game that also gives players the ability, gives them a path to earn real currency, now their their motives may not be purely to play the game because they're having fun with the game. On some, to some degree, it may be because they want to earn. So would you be able to speak at all to the earnings that people are withdrawing by playing on Wombat or, or how you think the population generally tilts motive wise? Um, so I think it strongly depends on how much money that can be right. Um, compared to kind of your average income, right? If this is a day, like if you can basically make a day's worth of, um, of income in a day, right. Um, in your, in your local, kind of um, circumstances, then you will probably do it full time and be motivated by it a lot, right? Um, whereas if, it's, if, it, if you're in, the, in North America and you can earn, I don't know, a few dollars per week um, by playing games, that's not going to be a major driver for you to actually do it, right? You, you're, you like that, you, that, you do it, that you're doing this. This is going to be a nice add-on. And most likely, you will basically spend the money that you're making on games again, right? So I think this is exactly where we're going with kind of the average play and earn, whatever you want to call it, uh, game in the future. This is where what we're going to end up with on average is that it's a nice to have for super, super heavy users. It might be uh, kind of a really good earning, right? But um, for hardly anyone, it's going to be like making a living um, if, it's, um, if it's supposed to be sustainable, basically. And if we're talking about kind of, um, yeah, North Americans or, or Western Europeans or whatever. 
right? And these are typically the people who spend most get most money in games. Mm -hmm. So is Dungeon Worlds kind of the the core game? Did you guys is this your developed? Um, yeah. So we know, have we have one or, game that's you, currently called Dungeon Master, right? That's that's what is, is a top twelve game. And Dungeon Worlds is basically the franchise system that we're building on top of that, right? So the, the base principle is super simple. It's an idle game. You basically, you stake NFTs and depending on how much, um, how, like how rare your NFTs are, you can stake up to 100 NFTs per blockchain. Um, and um, th then you basically, once you stake them, you, you do runs, right? And we just call them runs. And these runs can, can take five minutes, 15 minutes, up to 24 hours, right? And the more runs you do, the shorter they are, the more effective they are. And basically based on your, stake NFTs on your run durations and on your activity, basically, and on your equipment and your progress in the game, you'll be getting points, right? And this has been like wildly successful. I, we were really surprised when we launched that more than a year ago, how popular it became with this super simple uh, principle. So or, originally we were thinking, okay, we need to make the game more interesting by adding more complexity. But at some point we realized that people actually value that simplicity. Right, that it's um, that we have a huge fan base because it's so simple to play, but still offers a lot of different strategies. But the problem is that how do you choose which NFTs have which mining power, right? And which NFTs are actually stakeable? So right now on Wax alone, we have about thirty thousand mm -hmm. template templates of NFTs that are stakeable in Dungeon Master. It's crazy, and it's crazy to manage that, right? And every single season or every single day, basically, we get feedback of like, okay, this template shouldn't have this mining power, right? So we're like, how can we decide on that? We are, we're not even invested in any of these um, in any of these collections. Typically, we don't want the, uh, we don't want to make choices based on okay, that's good for us or whatever. So we basically just hand that over to 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 the community, right? So um, we're launching. So that, that's why we're making land, and um, we're basically enable enabling anyone to run their own dungeon, right? So we we'll have a lot of different dungeons all run by, except for the one that we still run, um, all run by the community, and they can make their own rules. They can basically decide which collections should be stakeable at which mining powers um, and which run durations should be allowed and who should be allowed to play in that dungeon and these kinds of things, right? Um, so this is what we're currently building on top of Dungeon Master. This is scheduled to launch in summer roundabout, and we've just had the first, we just started our first land drops a week ago. That is a lot of, uh, of significant information that we just sped through. So when you talk about landowners being able to determine the parameters of their own dungeon, does that mean that they can, for example, onboard collections that have not yet been onboarded to Wombat? Exactly. That's exactly the point, right? So with the 180 or something collections that we currently have stakeable, right, um, we're now adding two or three per season, not more, right? Because there is so many already and we're basically just doing token-based votes every season or twice a season to actually determine which ones should be stakeable next because it's, that's actually valuable to, to collections, right? So if they, if they get stakeable, they get more interaction on their collection. Typically the, the floor price goes up, their trading volume goes up because suddenly these, these NFTs have utility aside of what they are supposed to do anyway, right? Um, and we don't want to be kind of making these rules all by ourselves. So we're basically saying whoever runs a dungeon can choose which collections can be stakeable, right? And this may mean that uh, if you are, I don't know, Alien Worlds, you could make an Alien Worlds dungeon and basically just allow Alien Worlds collections to be stakeable there so that you add more utility to Alien Worlds NFTs, right? Or you could be um, an influencer or um, a community member and basically just put in your favorite collections that are stakeable, and that way the, the value of them or the utility for those NFTs might go up um, just because you are running a dungeon, right? And uh, so that, that's kind of the concept behind it. As you can see on the screen, I'm running a dungeon right now. I just clicked, went to dungeon.wombat.app, um, and I don't have any NFTs. I just said, all right, let's go. So it, am I earning right now? Is this running yes. through? So like what is what is what is happening? Um, Explain. So this. you see the number above the pick more NFTs to hide. You have a little chisel there, right? And uh, it says it, it says one. So that's your mining power. So that's if you uh -huh. don't have any if, NFT mm -hmm. stake, this is this is the mining power that you have the default is one, right? And but you can go ahead and stake some of your NFTs, right? We have about 
1.3, 1.5 million NFTs staked in Dungeon Master right now, right? Um, so it's a lot of NFTs, a lot of um, people who stake their stuff. And you can see next to each NFT, you can see what its mining power is, right? Um, I don't know why so many pictures aren't loading because they should all be there. But um, anyway. Um, how do I see, how do I know which are my NFTs these are, that I These are all stake? NFTs that you own with your account. Oh, these are mine. These are all mine. Um, so I just click I them. I just click them and I say hide and that's staking them. Yeah. Oh, well, that's easy. I'm going to, I'm just going to put them right in there. And so now you uh, have to so, sign a transaction, right? Yep. Wax is fast. I just sign a transaction. And boom. I just hid some Galeria NFTs so, in there. Turns out well, I have a lot of NFTs. Uh, so this is how many of my NFTs qualify? 1,812? Exactly. Wow. Right, that's a um, lot of NFTs. You can stake a maximum of 100 per blockchain, right? Okay. Um, so that uh, actually like some of these NFTs have super high mining powers, right? We have one of ones in there. Um, the, the top NFTs have, um, so right now, if you buy a land pack and a land drop, um, this can stake for up to 20,000 mining power, right? Um, Holy so, cow. Uh, so the top players have hundreds of thousands of mining power, right? And you get 16 now, <laughs> right? So you will be getting a little bit of a reward every day if you play the game, right? Depending on what your run lengths are. And then you can also have gear um, that will boost your, your earnings um, and can basically they, they change the gameplay for you, right? Um, but that's about it, right? You stake NFTs, you do dungeon runs, you equip. Um, we have a thing that's called um, the Well of Wealth, which is kind of a season journey. So you can explore all this in the game, right? You, you, and you have a chance of getting packs every day. So every, every day at, at, nine, uh, at night, um, UTC, you basically... Uh, we're calculating your rewards, and then you can claim a chest, and this chest will contain your points. These points translate into dollars worth of crypto at the end of the season, but you also have a chance of getting NFT packs uh, where you have equipment that you can equip to make your experience better. Well, what? This is cool. Riles, I'll, I'll leave you with the last question, sir. Oh, what really blows me away is the, the listing of the, the most played games on Wombat because, you know, I, I wasn't really sure what I expected. You said double and triple A. And when I come in here and I look at this and I see Dice Dreams, World of Tanks, Mecharina, and Raid Shadow fucking Legends, I'm like, oh, there's not really an upper limit on this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if, if anybody doesn't isn't aware of those, perhaps just because, you know, they're not really... Uh, all that, all that tuned into the the mobile gaming space. Those are massive, massive, massive titles with enormous user bases. So clearly, the potential here is is something to behold. I know that's not much of a question, but it's a hell of an observation. Um, yeah, <laughs> you can get NFTs by playing these games, right? And um, these are NFTs that we create, right? These are NFTs that we issue, so we don't have a problem with like uh, copyright infringements. Uh, we do have some. NFT collections that um, are based on top of the game assets themselves, but there we have a license, right? So it's all clean. We're not uh, like using copyrights of uh, game publishers that we don't own. Um, so yeah, um, that's that's what that's what fascinates a lot of people who have never kind of experienced anything like that before. And um, like I mean, we're pushing more into Web three now. We're, we want to get more quality Web three games, also. Um, integrating with our API so that we can hand out NFTs and other rewards and gamify their games essentially. Um, but um, this is this is still our kind of typical traditional gamer onboarding funnel, as uh, as we put it, um, where it's really easy for for traditional gamers to onboard and, and it's a very familiar experience. They don't have to pay anything up front. Right? They get a free Wax account, a free EOS account in Wombat. Um, they can pay later for for the account, right? Um, they can just use it as, as they as they go, right? And um, that that is kind of a very familiar experience to gamers. And they first want to try stuff before they actually commit to anything, right? Um, so that that is something that we wanted to to resemble in in, in Wombat. Well, we're we're convinced that gaming is one of the primary ways that the masses are going to be onboarded into the Web three world, and uh, you guys aren't just talking about it; you're doing it over three million accounts now, and I, I feel like you're developing quite a foothold in the space. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of yours to mess up, and I don't think you're going to. I think that you're going to keep growing. So, thanks for coming on and sharing with us today, Adrian. We appreciate it. 
Thanks a lot, Joel. Thanks, Riles. Awesome. We'll hang out just a second here in the uh, um, in the green room, as we call it, while we wrap up. And of course, uh, full disclosure, uh, as much as we love this game, we want to let you guys know that there was compensation in order for uh, Adrian and the team to come on today and talk about Wombat. And of course, this is not financial advice of any kind. Go do your own research, your own due diligence. But as a gamer, I'm going to recommend that you get the app just to, to play because you don't have to spend any money to get free wombats. Right, Zach or Riles. I mean, Hey, it's worth it. I hate when I do that, it's, it's worth exploring just on the basis of, of getting, coming to grips with exactly what is available. Uh, and it, it seems like a, a pretty intuitive way for, for the uninitiated, the blockchain and NFT uninitiated gamer to explore how they could extract additional utility from the experiences they already enjoy. And I have a feeling there's going to be a private discussion with Adrian right as soon as we're done with the show here. So thanks, everybody, for watching and or listening. Make sure you subscribe, ring the bells, hit all the buttons, tell a friend that Web3 is here to stay and gaming is a great way to onboard them. And Riles, is there anything else we want to tell them? Yeah, we want to tell everybody to keep it nifty. Looking into the future, what do we see? It's lined with digital collectibles, we call them NFTs. Games, trading cards, digital art, and those crypto kitties. Joel and Riles are the hosts you'll know. Joel and Riles say this won't blow. They're locked and loaded, so ready, set, go! It's the Nifty, really kind of spiffy. The Nifty Show.